Assalamu alaikum and peace to all the other listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Mabia, Muslim and Black in America. This is your host, Bilal Abdullah, coming back at you another week. Uh, hope y'all week been going good. My week been going good. Getting these hours in. Getting this guala, you know. Got to get that money, y'all. And speaking of money, if y'all want to drop a donation, I got the link in the description. And, uh, you know, you can hit that up. Or if you just like listening, hit give me a like. You know, that's a good enough donation. Hit me a like, share, uh, spread the link around, do what you do. But as I said, this is Mobby, a Muslim and Black in America. And, you know, in this day and age, one of the most hardest things for us to do, especially in America, is one stay on dean and two practice what we preach it is difficult to live in a cancer or with a cancer and not be affected by it in some way the cancer i speak on is the hedonism of america and in the west the what they call felimas or do what thou wilt or satanism of america this propaganda calls to the lower desires of self and the lower self says hey this looks like looks like fun the lower self loves ease luxury comfort sexual gratification in any way food etc and when one does not have their lower self in control this society will destroy you slowly or bring you into a lifestyle of sin that Allah may have to put you in the hellfire for some time if you even die as a Muslim people think dying as a Muslim is something easy but not in this society but we, we must try our best to practice what we preach. This is to myself definitely first. Don't think because I do these audios that I'm holier than thou. I'm probably way more sinful than you are and may Allah forgive us all and pardon us all. Also, this talk will be connected somewhat to my last few audios I dropped as well. Tariq Ramadan is in the news again. We already spoke with him before on his rape allegations. Later, he admitted that these were actually consensual sexual encounters and not rape, even though before all that, he strongly denied that anything had happened. So basically, he was lying. Now, recently, the courts have went through his computer and found what they allege as 776 pornographic and sexual pictures, some of which include the women he had allegedly raped, which means to me... He didn't rape those women, but those women were trying to protect their honor and hide their sin, so they lied as well. The reason I say this topic will kind of relate back to the other last two topics I spoke on is because this man, Tariq Ramadan, uh, is trying to push the liberal or in Islamic term, the more murji type of Islam, basically an Islam that the European non-Muslims can be at ease with. That they think that they can say, ah, they're on a threat to my white supremacy. And by threat, I don't mean with weapons or killing. I mean by belief, aqida, practice, manners, righteousness, character, firmness, or morals. So he's trying to push all this liberal stuff to please Massa, basically. And it seems like he went to this side because of his grandfather who started the Islamic Brotherhood movement. It seems he's trying to his best to distance himself from that. But no matter what he does, no matter how hard he tries to appease and look like a safe Muslim, they still, meaning the non-Muslims, the Europeans, they still look at him as the enemy and put him right in jail. Inshallah, he will be released, but the evidence isn't looking good. Meaning, he will probably get off for the alleged rape, but he was still fornicating with these women on his own admission. So he has a stain on his representation as a scholar. Zena is on, Zena on a scholar's resume is one of those sins that will turn your students and followers away from you because you are not practicing what you preach to that degree. And really, you have to question why his liberalism is being propagandized to the youth. Is he working for them people? I don't know, but I know he is a very popular speaker that is popular amongst the youth. At a time when liberalism is taking our children away from the dean, he's teaching our children to be more liberal. This is very dangerous to me. 
And I look at him in a suspect way, especially with these allegations. You telling us to become more a part of Western society, what does that mean? Participating in democracy, which is one of the greatest shirks under the heavens, or to be like you and enjoy the women of these liberal societies via fornication. Allah says in Surah 61 verses 2 and 3, O you who have believed, why do you say what you do not do? Great is hatred in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not do. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, There are three signs for a hypocrite. When he promises, he breaks his promise. When he speaks, he lies. And when he is entrusted, he betrays. And what is this man, Tariq, entrusted with? He's entrusted with the guidance of the Ummah. And him being a so-called scholar makes the crimes even worse and pretty much will nullify his scholarship. Believers, this is what life is about. Life is about bringing your character and morals and actions in line with what Allah and his messenger have brought so that you will not be one of those who say what they do not do. You reciting your Salah, if you don't live accordingly, you are saying what you do not do. Why? Because when you make Salah, you are reciting the verses of the Quran. <clears throat> Amongst the worst of people is a wicked man who reads the book of Allah and, and is inattentive to it. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said. And one of the companions, it, it is narrated on the authority of Jundub, may Allah be pleased with him, that he said, We the companions of the Messenger of Allah were given faith before the Quran, and after us there will be a people who will be given the Quran before faith. They will establish it in letter and neglect its limits and rights, saying, We recite the Quran. Who could recite it better than us? We know the Quran. Who has knowledge better than us? That will be their share. According to another narration, the prophet said, uh, or According to another narration, this companion said, Those will be the worst of the people. Also, Anas ibn Malik reported, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I passed by some men on the night of ascension whose lips were being cut off by scissors of fire. I said, O oh, Jibril, who are these people? Jibril said, These are preachers from your nation who commanded people to be righteous and they forgot it themselves, although they recited the book. And we can keep going on with hadith. This shows the importance of practicing what you preach. This is a part of us being of the best of creation because enjoying the good and forbidding the evil is a part of us being the best of creation. Allah says in Surah 3 verse 110 that you are the best nation produced as an example for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and you believe in Allah. See, this is why non-muslims look at us real crazy and call us out when they see us doing something that they know muslims shouldn't be doing yet they won't call out their christian friend for doing the same sin it's because they instinctively know the high standard a muslim is held to also subconsciously they know that this way of life is the truth and they know that what they follow is just play for them so they look at you like Man, you're supposed to be better than me. Islam is a serious religion. It really exposes how they take their religion for a game. And it's as Allah said in the rest of the ayat of Surah 3 verse 110. If only the people of the scripture had believed, it would have been better for them. Among them are believers, but most of them are defiantly disobedient. As a Muslim, you have to stay on point unless you have no shame. Shame will make you hide your sins and not want them to be known. I had a Muslim buddy who smoked and he used to do YouTube videos with his non-Muslim friend. They would both smoke, but when it came time for the videos to be made, he told his homie, nah, man, I can't smoke on camera. I don't want to put that sin out to the whole world. It's bad enough I do it and, and do it in front of you. See, this is a sign of shame of what he is doing, and that's good. Inshallah, Allah will guide him and give him the strength to give up such evil deeds. So even as a layman, the average Muslim, you got to be on point. 
if you have a drinking addiction, first you should be trying to give it up. And even if you get weak to go get some of that Hennessy, you should be trying to hide it and hope that no one sees you. So just think for the scholar, it's harsh, but a scholar or even an imam pretty much got to be a walking angel. They have to be on the level of Ihsan or at least the level of Mu'min. A Mu'min is someone who doesn't have major sins as a character trait. They may do them here and there, but they are so few and far in between, it's not really a character trait of theirs. This is why Allah says in the Quran in Surah 35 verse 28, it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. A true scholar fears Allah. His knowledge causes him to fear Allah more and more. Ibn Taymiyyah said concerning this verse, this indicates that everyone who fears Allah has knowledge, which is true. It does not indicate that everyone who has knowledge fears Allah. It was narrated that Ibn Masood, may Allah be pleased with him, said, the sign of knowledge is not narrating many a hadith. Rather, the sign of knowledge is fearing Allah a great deal. To be fair, everyone has hypocrisy of the limbs. We all make mistakes and we all sin. Becoming pious and increasing in taqwa is a lifelong process. It's not something that will happen overnight for the majority of us, especially in today's time. But we must continue to push forward. You may ask, well, since we can't ever be perfect, then what is my goal in regards to sinning and my character? What should I be striving to reach? Allah gives you the answer in the Quran in Surah 4 verse 31. If you will, Allah says, if you avoid the major sins which you, which you are forbidden, we will remove from you your lesser sins and admit you to a noble entrance, which is paradise. So what you should be striving for is to get to the level of quote unquote perfection as humanly possible, which is to not have major sins as a part of your character trait. This will get you to the level of what I call humanly perfect, if you can call it that. And if you want to go even further to the level of Ihsan, which is worshiping Allah as if you see him. And even if you don't see him, you are constantly aware that he sees you. At this level, this is where you don't even do things that are makru on the regular. That's the elite of the elite. But also to be fair to Tariq Ramadan, these pictures that they allegedly found on his computer could also be made up by the disbelievers. You know how they do. But the fact that he admitted to having sexual contact with these women from his own mouth, then it's not really looking that way. I just pray that Allah guides him and pardons him in this life and the next because that could be any one of us. Allah is Al-Satir, the one who conceals. But also Allah is the one who can expose and debase you and humiliate you. The temptation of women is very strong. We know the story of Prophet Yusuf when the wife of the king tried to holler at him for sex. If you read the story in the Quran, it says he almost inclined to her. And had it not been for the blessings that Allah gave him, then he might have went forward and did something. This is in Surah 12, verse 24. Allah says, and she certainly determined to seduce him. And he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof of his Lord. And thus it was that we should avert from him evil and immorality. Indeed, he was one of our chosen servants. So this shows that even though these men are prophets and Allah protected them from such major sins, they were still human and had desires. Also, we know the story of the prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he told us, of the scholar in the past who ended up sleeping with the woman because shaitan kept enticing him and at the end of this story he ended up killing the young woman burying her and then when he was about to be killed for what he had done the shaitan came to him and said okay look i can save you but the only way i can save you is if you bow down to me and so the so-called scholar bowed down to shaitan. And as soon as he did that, that's when his head got cut off and he died. So where you think he ended up? 
So you got to understand, fellas, that knowledge is an aphrodisiac to to women. When you have knowledge and can impart it in a good way that people understand, a lot of women will be attracted to that. So you must also have wisdom with that knowledge and know that you cannot give into your lower desires. And this is why as a scholar, you have to be on point, especially in regards to that, because something like that is career ending. It's not the same for the layman. If you found a Muslim brother, just, you know, a layman, a regular Muslim brother, he's not an imam. <clears throat> and you caught him at the liquor store. You're going to call him out. But if you seen your imam at the liquor store buying some cognac, it's going to be way different. You're going to be like, wow. You see what I'm saying? But I hope this episode is beneficial to you all. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share, pass it on to your friends. This episode was a little short this week. You know, I've been doing a lot of work, doing a lot of hours at work. So bear with me, y'all. We're going to hit you back up. Thank you for listening. This is Muslim and Black in America. I'm your host, Bilal Abdullah. Until next time, if I've said anything incorrect, then it was from myself and from the shaitan. And if I say anything good, it's from Allah. I'll check y'all out next time. Peace.